Hello and welcome back. I'm going to be talking about Chuck, Paul and Nick today. Um, I started reading Chuck, Paul and Nick's books about five years ago. I'm a big fan of Fight Club and that movie led me on to some of his books. And since then I've read about eight of his novels and I know it sounds strange but I can't actually work out whether I'm a fan of his work or not. I can't actually work out whether I enjoy reading Chuck Paul and Nick's books. The first thing that hits you when you read his books is his really unique writing style. His style is unlike any other author. It's, it's very fun, it's very daring and it's, uh, it's quite uh, transgressive and that's good. But on the other hand it can be quite disorientating as well. He doesn't describe scenes very much and it's kind of, you can kind of lose track of where the story is going. Um, his prose feels a bit chaotic sometimes and the, the kind of, his writing style is so all over the place that big revelations can happen in the story and you just kind of, they just kind of go over your head. For example, I recently read Invisible Monsters and there's a part in the story where you find out that two female characters used to be men. Of course, that's a massive twist in the plot, but I read it and I was just like, so what? It, just, it was just like reading any other paragraph because of the writing style. Uh, a lot of people say all of his characters are the same as well. Whether he's writing about a young transvestite or an old man or something, they've all got the same kind of voice. You hear that a lot about Chuck, Paul and Nick. Uh, but on the other hand, he is very daring and his stuff is very original and I respect that. He takes on storylines that nobody else does and you have to respect that. Um, he d he's definitely not bland. He doesn't create bland books. He creates daring books and he doesn't he doesn't produce cookie cutter material, if you know what I mean. But that said, the, the last couple of books I've read by him, I've, I've had to kind of push myself through them, and it's been a bit of a, a bit of a relief to get to the end of them. So I've, I've got kind of a split opinion about Chuck Paul and Nick's books. I can't quite work out whether I like reading them or not. And uh, I'm going to give him one more chance, I think. There's, he's got a new book out called Consider This and it's not actually a novel, it's, uh, it's like a memoir. He, he's writing about his, his career in this book. I'm quite tempted to give this one a go, uh, so I might give him one more chance. It's starting to rain now, which is typical, but I just want to, I just want to speak about these eight books that I've, that I've read of his and I'm going to kind of put them in order. These are not going to be in the order that I've read them in. They're going to be... I'm going to start with the worst one and I'm going to end up with the, the one I think is the best. Okay, so these are the books that I've read by Chuck, Paul and Nick. The first one I'm going to mention is Make Something Up. I, I didn't like this book at all. Luckily I didn't buy it. I rented it from the... Uh, I borrowed it from the library and it's a book of short stories and I literally read about two or three stories and I took it back because it was too bland. This book actually is bland and I think he was kind of... Uh, he was kind of bowing down to social justice warriors with this. He was, he was worried about offending people, I think. Make something up I didn't, I didn't like at all. Invisible Monsters I read very recently and I didn't enjoy it because it was just too all over the place. It was too chaotic and just too many twists and turns. Too disorientating. The next one on the list is Choke. I read Choke fairly recently and I don't really rate this book either because it's got an unrealistic concept. It's about somebody who goes into restaurants and deliberately chokes on food so people will come to his rescue and then they, they start paying him money each month because they've got a good feeling of being, being heroic. It, it was just, again, it was too disorientating and the, the plot was unrealistic. 
Um, next one up is diary. Diary is quite good. That's why I'm putting it quite high up on the list. And diary, I'd recommend reading diary if you're an artist. If you're if you're a visual artist, I think you, you'd enjoy this book because the there's an artist character in the book, and Chuck Paul and Nick he, he writes about the experience of being an artist, going to university or college, and the struggle that artists have in their life and becoming recognised and stuff. I wouldn't say it's a brilliant book, but it's it's quite good. So di Diary, I kind of recommend. Uh, above that, I'm going to put Survivor. Survivor is quite high up on the list because it's quite a funny concept. He writes about this man who's part of a religious cult, kind of like an Amish type man. And he, I think his cult dies or something, and then he becomes a celebrity in modern day America and he gets all of these deals to go on talk shows and chat shows and he, he writes his own books and he starts living like a celebrity lifestyle and gets like makeovers and he wears all these fashionable clothes and stuff so he starts living like the, the, the complete opposite lifestyle of what he did in the cult. I found it quite a, a funny concept and it, is, it did make me laugh as well. Again, it's not going to be for everyone's taste, but it's, it's one of the better ones that I've read of his. Uh, next one up on the list is Fight Club. Fight, well, Fight Club. I absolutely adore the movie. The movie is brilliant. And then I was led on to the book. So I read the book after the movie. Um, the first thing I'll say is, the movie's better, unfortunately. The book is just not as good as the film. But if you read the book without knowing that the, the movie existed, you would enjoy it. Um, in fact, if you haven't seen the movie yet, maybe you should read the book first and, and then watch the movie. Do it in that order. But um, it, the book is good. Again, it's written in this bizarre style that only Chuck Paul and it can manage. Uh, it, it's got a very American style, if you know what I mean. Americans do this thing where they use the, the present tense instead of the past tense. So if they're, if they're telling a story, instead of saying, a man walked into the bar and then he sat down and then he ordered a drink and then he said this, uh, Americans do this thing where he says he walks into the bar and then he sits down and then he orders a drink and then he says this. They use the present tense instead of the past tense when describing something in the past. And, and he also does this thing where he uses adjectives instead of adverbs. Instead of saying like the man walks slowly, he says the man walks slow. I know I'm getting a bit fussy here, but it is, I'm trying to give you an idea of what his writing style is like. It's very American, and it's very modern. But uh, F Fight Club, I'd recommend Fight Club. Read the book first, and then watch the movie, though. Next one up on the list, and I'm putting this in second place, is Damned. I read this about two or three years ago. And this one is actually a bit easier to read. It's still got Chuck Paul and Nick's style, but this one's a bit more grounded. It's a bit more of a straightforward story to read. And it's also one of his funnier novels as well. It is very funny. It's about somebody who gets sent to hell, and there he describes what hell must be like. And you get these big descriptions of like a big sea of pus or a big sea of lava and the big thing for me is Charles Darwin is in the novel which I love. Charles Darwin is in hell because he was the one who discovered uh, the theory of evolution. <laughs> that was brilliant, I loved reading that bit. So I, I recommend Damned and right at the top at number one I'm putting Haunted by Chuck Paul and Nick. Haunted this is the weird thing. Although I can't work out whether I like reading Chuck, Paul and Nick or not, 
One of his books is in my top five books of all time, ever. And that's this one, Haunted. Haunted is, is worth reading, if only just for two short stories, Guts and The Nightmare Box. I've actually made a story about The Nightmare Box on its own. And just this, uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to move here. It's, gonna, it's pissing down my rain. Um, let's get this. It's worth reading, it's worth reading Haunted just for two short stories, Guts and The Nightmare Box. And it's a hilarious novel as well. Haunted is, is hilarious all the way through. And it's, it's, in my old, well, it's in my top five books of all time. So go out and read Haunted. There, that's my list. The eight books I've read in order. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna to have to go because it's starting to chuck it down with rain. Um, I'll be back in another couple of weeks or so with another video. In the meantime, head over to my site, jamesflynn.org, to see all of my stuff. Have a great day on this weird and wonderful rock we call Earth. Goodbye.